the very last line, the very last line of the third verse says, the journey gets sweeter each day. On that line, the whole choir comes in and sings, right? So I need, and I'm talking about lifting the tent singing. This ain't the first prayers up in here, all right? We're going to sing tonight, okay? We're going to let her rip. So we'll go through that third verse and fourth few times, and then on that bridge, She'll sing in the microphone, I'm the last, and she'll hold it out, and we'll come back in, so much more than I ever deserve. How many of y'all know that part? All right, so basically everybody knows that, simple enough. Um, So go, go ahead and um, let's do every chorus in the different keys.
All right, if you're singing in the choir, if you don't mind making your way back up here as we get ready to start in just a minute. Amen. How many of y'all is glad to be under the tent tonight? Say amen. Amen. Been looking forward to this. 
How many of you are glad that you know that you know that you're saved? Hey, Amen. Let's stand together and sing this old song. Everybody, we'll be happy over there. I'm glad to know that I don't have to wait till I get there to have joy, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hey, Amen. He's made me happy down here. Let's sing it tonight. Everybody, we'll be happy. Here we go. Well, there's a happy land of promise over in the grave beyond where the same diverse shall soon the glory share. Where the souls of man shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy there. Will be happy over there. Oh, and we will shout and sing his praise. Everybody will be happy over there. That's why 
why I get happy tonight. I want to sing about it. I don't know if y'all do, but I feel like singing. I know my name is there. How many of you know it tonight? Let's sing that together. I know. service and you don't know before you leave tonight, you'll have that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine. Thank you for being in the service tonight. How God blessed last night in the service. And I don't believe it's going to be any different tonight. God's going to do it again. And we appreciate so much you being here. Had a wonderful service this morning. God blessed us in the morning service. I encourage you, if there's any way you can be here at 1030, you ought to be here any way possible. And we appreciate what God did. And I want to thank God ahead of time for what he is going to do. Brother Floyd Repass, pastor of Community Baptist Church, Graham, I want him to come and take us to the Lord in prayer. How many of you will believe God with me tonight? 
that he'll do something special in this service. Would you agree with us tonight? Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. All right, let's pray. Father, we are thankful for the privilege we have just to be here tonight, and God, it's been good. We think about the meeting last year, but Lord, we've never seen it like that, but that's not enough. We're looking for something today. We want you to do something tonight. I pray, God, that you'll minister to every heart, speak to every heart. God, do a work that only you can do. We've been singing, I know my name is there. God is so good. Fifty years ago, Lord, you saved my soul, and I give you the praise. I want to thank you for it. Pray, God, you'll just bless now in the service tonight. Use Brother C.T., anoint him afresh. God, speak to him and through him that we might get a blessing from heaven. We just wait upon you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Y'all can be seated. Pray for the choir tonight as they sing.
more than I need. I can never describe this goodness to me. You ask how I make it day after day. There's only one thing I can say. looking over this crowd and uh, last night and tonight both have been overwhelmed by emotion just walking under this tent and uh, while they singing that song my eye fell in this choir and I started looking through here at all the faces and my mind, my face my, went all the way back to that corner to my buddy Darnell, wave at me Darnell wave at me Darnell and I started remembering last year when we was under this tent and uh, I, I walked in one night we was giving invitation time and Darnell stood over there and I, I sent some altar workers after him and they, they said we don't know what to tell you preacher I went over to him I said what's your name he said none of your business <laughs> he said what's it to you and I said alright you have a good day I figured he's a bigger boy than I am he'll whoop me so I'm going to let him have do what he wants to do and uh the internal staff here got to praying for Darnell by name. <laughs> I didn't know if we'd ever see Darnell again. I didn't know where he came from. Didn't know if he'd come back. And night after night after night, I'd see Darnell walk that out and he just stared. People on the altar trying to figure out what was going on. He started softening up to the point where we could talk to him. And he said, I'm just trying to figure all this stuff out. And I'll never forget on one of the final nights last year, Darnell finally bowed his head and called on the name of Jesus and asked the Lord to come into his heart. I'll never forget behind that part of the stage. I met him after church. And one of the men said, Darnell wants to tell you something. And Darnell's face lit up. 
He said, I did it, preacher. And a year later, I look in that choir. This may not help y'all at all, but I'm going to have church by myself tonight. Y'all, y'all can sit in your pretty seats and act dignified if you want, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have church. A year later, I look at somebody that the devil used to have wrapped up in all the things of this world, and I see a year later he's in the choir with a smile on his face saying, I've been blessed. I'm going to tell you this, honey. We ought to rejoice, and we all want to take laps around this building tonight over the fact that when Jesus saves a man, Jesus keeps a man, and he puts joy, and he puts peace, and he puts love. How many of y'all remember when that was you? When Jesus came on the inside, heaven moved in, good God Almighty, and hell moved out, honey. I'm glad that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things passed away. Behold, all things become new. And if you're a born again child of God and God gives you the victory and if God saved your soul, you ought not stay in your seat tonight. You ought not remain quiet tonight. You ought not remain silent tonight. But there ought to be something on the inside that says I remember where he brought me from. I remember where I was when Jesus saved me. And with the best of my ability, I will say I've been blessed. I've been blessed. I've been blessed. Things may not be everything I want them to be, but I've been blessed. Things may not be going the way I want them to go, but I've been blessed. I may not have as much money in the bank as I want to have, but I've been blessed. I might have got a bad report today, but I've been blessed. Anybody with me tonight? I'm going to kick it till it moves, y'all. I'm tired. I'm blessed. I got breath living on the inside. And God said, what's everything that hath breath? Praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing God's air, you're living under a mandate to give God the glory. If you're breathing God's air, you're living under the commandment to give God some praise. We're going to rewind that second verse. Some of y'all, we done seen your car in the parking lot. People already know you're here. You might as well go to church. I dare you to go back and remind yourself how broke, how bound, how lost in sin you were. But one day Jesus passed by, wrote your name in the land. DR, put that guitar down. Come brag on Jesus. Come on, son. Come brag on Jesus. They're not getting what I'm saying, so I want you to tell them. Come here. Tell, brag on how good it is to be saved. Y'all turn this thing on good right here. Tell them how good it is to be saved. Last year at this time, I was sitting on a bar stool. Addicted to pornography. I had no hope, I had no peace, I had no joy. I never would have dreamed in a million years what the next year would take place. I never would have thought that a God so big would look down on somebody so small, somebody so wicked, somebody that did not deserve nothing but hell, but He loved me so much. He knew what I was. He knew everything I had done. He knew how wicked I was. He knew how unworthy I was. Yet He looked my way and He said, I love you. He said, I want to save you. He said, I want to change you by the power of God. I've been blessed tonight. Hallelujah. If you've been saved by the power of God, you ought to give Him glory tonight. He saved you by the power of God. He changed your life for time and for eternity. If we got what we deserve, we'd all be in hell. I said if we got what we deserve, we'd all be in hell. But God loved us. But God had mercy on us. But God 
saved us by the power of God. I say hallelujah, glory to God. I look at my wife over there. She was a drunk just like I was. If you only knew what God brought us from. And in one year, Brother Randy, in just one year, God took us wicked sinners. He took our black hearts. He washed them in red blood. And we came out white as snow. There is a difference in God. There is a difference in Jesus. He can take your life. He can change you for time and for eternity. That's what my Jesus can do. Hallelujah.
All right, I want everybody to be seated except the preachers. I want all of God's men preachers, please, if you would, remain standing. And uh, we don't have time to introduce all of you, but we want to give a count. And we've had preachers already from different states to be with us in this meeting. And we're so glad to have you, men of God. Thank you for your burden and concern for revival and for being here. All right, fellas, let's get a count. preachers tonight. Second night of the meeting. Praise be to God. Thank you, men of God. Thank you. Praise the Lord for you. We're going to ask our ushers to come and we're going to receive the offer for the expenses of the meeting. When you invest in this meeting, you're investing in the kingdom of God. This tent's going to go all around the country, I'm convinced. And I tell you, we are invested in the souls of men. Revival. We want you to give unto the Lord tonight. There are some cards on the back of the uh, seats. And you can use those cards. There's ways to tell you how to give by texting. Now that's something people can do now. And there's information on the back of the seat. So if you want to use that, it's there for your information. Ushers, please come. If you want to make a check out tonight, make it to CTM. CTM. And all of it will go for the help the expenses of this meeting. It takes a lot of expenses to put a meeting on like this. And thank you for your faithful giving. I want Brother Sparks to come. Brother Jason Sparks, I want you to come. From Whipley, West Virginia, Grace Baptist Church, God bless you. Take us to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I love you tonight. God, I thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. I thank you, God, for sending your son Jesus to die for me, God. I thank you, God, for saving my soul one day. God, on that third pew back on the right side of that church, God, I'll never forget it. And I'll never have any regrets, dear Lord. I thank you so much. God, I ask you to touch us tonight, dear Lord. Bless us. In the service, God, touch CT. God, anoint him with power, God. Touch him, God. Use him in a mighty way, God, like never before. And dear God, I ask you, Lord, just meet with us tonight, God. And let us see a harvest of souls tonight, dear Lord, God. If somebody's lost, God, convict their soul, Lord, tonight. Let us see them get saved. Dear God, I ask you to take care of all the finances me. Let it not be a burden. Let it not be a worry on any of these men's minds, God, on Brother CT, God. But let people give, God, like you've given to them, dear Lord God, touch us tonight and help us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
He's the faithful God. How about you? As God's man comes tonight, let's be praying as we're hearing the word of God. You can be praying for God's man as he preaches. Now here's God's man with God's message, Brother C.T. Townsend. And all God's people said, Amen. grab your Bibles tonight and turn with me to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter number one. While you're turning there, I want to say thank you for being under the gospel tent tonight, isn't it amazing what God has given us to worship Him in? And I appreciate all the people that are working behind the scenes, all of our parking attendants, all of the ushers, everybody that got here early today and will stay late, are working so hard. Let's let them know how thankful we are that they're working today and help this tent. Uh, Y'all give them love right there and let them know how glad we are, thankful for them. When you get to Jonah chapter 1, stand to your feet in honor and reverence for the Word of God. And um, 
Thankful for the goodness of the Lord. Didn't the choir do a wonderful job? We thank God they get here early and they practice and we appreciate them. That teenage girl that sung that song, Lord, I believe she's going to be a singer one of these days. And uh, I appreciate her. And um, if you love the Lord, say amen. amen. I appreciate all of you that are here tonight. I appreciate all the people. We want to welcome all the people that are live, uh, watching via over the internet on the live stream. Uh, we went to great lengths to make that better. And uh, we're believing by faith that not only can we make an impact here, but we can make an impact and take something the devil uses a lot and beat him over the head with it. Somebody say amen right there. And uh, we are thankful for all the people that are watching via live Facebook. Uh, last night, by the time uh, when we were in service, at any given moment, we had right at 2,000 people watching live while we were in church. And then by the end of the service, we had 100,000 plus unique views of this service from across the world and across the country. And uh, we give God the glory and the praise for that. That's something I can't do and you can't do. That's something that lets me know this, that God's people across the country are hungry for the power of God and for revival in this hour. And I'm thankful that God has reserved Himself a remnant that have not bowed the knee to the things of this world, to political correctness, and to the things of this society, but we still have a people that believe that there is one God and His Son is Jesus Christ and He has the power to change the lives of people today. Can I get a witness right there? I'm glad that He is alive. I'm glad His name is Jesus. I'm not talking about a figment of our imagination tonight. I'm talking about a historical character that we can prove, infallible proofs, the Word of God said. He was who He said He was. He died upon the cruel cross of Calvary. They laid Him in a borrowed tomb. It was a bar... Can I preach already just in my introduction? It was a borrowed tomb because He did not plan on staying there very long. And the joy of Christianity is on that third and glorious morning the grave could not keep him. Death could not hold him. But he got up by his own power. The Word of God said, If Christ be not risen, we are of all men most miserable. And I'm glad I don't have to be miserable because he didn't stay dead and he won't stay gone. But he's alive. The songwriter said, You ask me how I know he lives. He lives inside my heart. And I'm glad today as a gospel preacher, the greatest message in the entire world is that Jesus has the power to save your life no matter who you are, where you've been, or what you've done. If you believe that, say amen. amen. Jonah chapter number 1. Jonah chapter 1. I preached too long tonight, Becky told me. So I'm, I'm on a time limit she's given me tonight, so I'm going to follow that because I can handle it if y'all's mad at me, but I can't handle it if she's mad at me. Somebody say amen. Jonah chapter number 1, verse number 1. Oh, I do want to say this to all of our people watching Facebook. If you'll share this video and help us with that, that'll get it out and help more people hear the gospel tonight. So those of you that are watching, just go down there and click that share button. If you're in here, you can get on your Facebook for just a few minutes. If you stay on it, I'll throw my microphone at you. Uh, but get on there and share this link and help us get the word out, help the people hear the gospel Tonight, Jonah chapter number 1 and verse number 1. If you love the Bible, say amen. amen. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah. This whole story could have been one chapter or less if Jonah would have just obeyed the Word of God. But now we got multiple chapters having to chase him down, going the long way around. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof. 
went down into it. Watch this. You start running from God, you're going down. Every time, every single time, went down into it, went down to Joppa, and he found the ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof. There he went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Verse number 3 says this, but Jonah. Verse number 4 says this, but the Lord. How many of y'all glad for every mistake you made, God had something coming after you? Boy, I feel like I'm going to preach tonight. Oh, verse number four. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But... Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come, let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah look at the person beside me and say you can't hide you can't hide you can't hide when it comes to God and then they said unto him tell us we pray thee for whose cause this evil is upon us what is thine occupation and whence comest thou what is thy country and what people art thou and he said unto them he's starting to get honest I am an Hebrew and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told him. Then said they unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was tempestuous. Can we pray tonight? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, as humbly as I possibly know how, God, I'll remind you that I'm completely aware that I have no ability whatsoever to make a difference or a change in the lives of these people. God, I'm so bankrupt in and of myself my charisma will not get the job done. My education will not finalize anything. Lord, I'm leaning upon the precious spirit of a holy God. Lord, to let me preach tonight to these people, God, that the word of God may get deep down on the inside of the hearts and you would change lives tonight. I pray, God, you'd receive maximum glory. Move me out of the way. May nobody see me. And may everybody see you tonight. And God, for everything you do, we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, you may be seated. Jonah's call. Jonah's call. The very first thing we find as we enter into this text is we see the call that Jonah had upon his life. As we enter into our text, I love the book of Jonah. I think every single one of us can find ourselves on every single page of the book of Jonah. And we find here in the very first part of Jonah, chapter number 1, where the Bible enters us into the story, into the theme, and into the plot, where the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. We should fall upon our face and be mighty humble that God would send the word of God to us one time and that God would reach out to us and let us do anything for His glory. I get nervous when I get around preachers that say I have to preach. I get nervous when I get around Christians that say I have to serve. I get nervous when I get around people that say I've got to go do this. Let me say this. I don't have to do anything. I get to do something for the glory of God. It is my honor and my privilege to do anything for the glory of an almighty God. And Jonah had a call upon his life. The Bible said that in verse number one the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. 
Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. And we find where the word of the Lord comes and calls Jonah into another article and another element of ministry for his life. And we find, wouldn't it have been wonderful if the text would have said, And Jonah agreed, and Jonah surrendered, and Jonah went to Nineveh, and the greatest revival recorded in the Bible fell in that day and hour. But instead, in verse number 3, we find where Jonah refused the will of God. And before we look down our pointed nose, our pharisaical nose, our Sadducee nose, at Jonah, you and I must understand that every man and woman under the sound of my voice tonight, there is a calling of God upon your life. Every single person under this tent, I do not believe that God has ever saved one person to just sit on a pew, but rather when God lets you be born and when God lets you breathe His air, God lets you be born with a purpose and with a destiny and with a cause. I can't be you and you may not can be me, but if we would all fulfill the purpose that God has for our life, then we would all be advancing the kingdom of heaven better than we are today. And I'm, I dare say this, that more often than not, the calling of God reaches a man or a woman's heart and there is that same hesitation, there is that same fear that what if I say yes to God, what does that mean? And we find that the book of Jonah tells us a story and a plot of a man that began saying no to the will of God. He began saying no to the will of God. Number one, he said no to the will of God because uh, most commentators would say that Jonah was not a brand new person in the work of the Lord, but he was already had some seasoning behind him. And the calling that God has laid upon his life was not his first calling, but it was a different calling. So this calling, call, watch this now, y'all with me? It called him out of his comfort zone. It called him out of a place of normalcy. There's one thing I know about people is we like our comfort zones. And we don't like nobody messing with the way we got our stuff going on. But may I say this, that God reserves the right to do whatever He wants to do whenever He wants to do it. The call of God on Jonah's life was a calling that would take him out of his comfort zone and take him to another place. Not only that, but in those days, Nineveh was to Israel what Iran is to Israel today. Nineveh was a wicked city. Nineveh was a threat to the people of God. And we find here that in the life of Jonah, God was calling him to a people that he probably did not love, that he probably did not want to see the mercy of God reach, but rather, if no Jonah would have his way, he would probably pray that God would wipe them off the face of the map. But what are you going to do when God wants to show mercy to people that you don't even love anymore? Uh, what are you going to do when God calls you uh, to go reach a people that you don't even want to be a part of? Uh, but yet we find in the life of Jonah that God calls him to go to Nineveh. And the base of the line is that Jonah looks and says no to God. Everybody look me right here. It is dangerous to say no to God. It is dangerous to say no to God. We see Jonah's call and then we see Jonah's cost. Jonah's cost. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish so he paid the fare thereof. Listen to me. When you choose to walk away from the presence and the purpose of God, there is a fare to be paid. There is a cost that will be 
paid when we ignore the voice of God and say no to God and yes to our flesh there is a price that will be paid I thought about this if Jonah would have said yes to God and went to Nineveh God would have paid the bill he could have claimed the fact that God owns a cattle on a thousand hills and I've learned that when you operate in the calling of God God will give you everything that you need he may not give you everything you want but he will give you everything you need to fulfill and accomplish the purpose that God has led you into but we find upon this day that Jonah is having to pay the bill because he said no to God and he's paying the fare thereof and he says no and the Bible says watch this now that he's running from the presence of the Lord I know I ain't the smartest in the jar, but y'all hear me. Where are you going to go? Listen, think about this. Come, let us reason together, saith the Lord. You going to run from the presence of the Lord? Where are you going to go to get away from the God that formed everything? Well, hey, 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 hey. He's omnipresent, meaning this. He's in North Carolina and he's in South Carolina all at the same time. When you got in your car, he was waiting on you to get in the car. When you left the house, he stayed in the house and was in the car with you all at the same time. When you got under the tent, he was already here. He was still in your car and he was still at your house. He's everywhere all at the same time. Uh, he's in Russia. He's in Europe. Uh, he's in China. He's in Africa. I'm telling you he's everywhere all at the same time. The word of God says if I take the wings of the morning and ascend into the heavens, uh, behold uh, thou art there. Uh, if I make my bed in hell, uh, behold thou art there. Uh, he's a God that is everywhere all at the same time. Uh, I don't be discouraged by that. I'm encouraged that my God's got my back, he's got my front, and he's got my sides but hear me well, when you go to running from God, you go on the wrong side of God, and you'll find when you run from God, no matter how fast you run, you can't run fast enough to outrun the presence of God no matter what kind of jet plane you get on, you may think you're getting away from him, but before you land, he'll be standing there waiting on you to get there, he's God in the morning, he's God in the evening. He's God at night time. He's God all over the place. And when you choose to run from God, listen to me, you better reason in your mind where are you going to go to get away from the presence of God. He's everywhere all at the same time. Jonah's call. Jonah's cost. Very quickly, Jonah finds out that living outside the will of God is not a good place to be. How many of y'all believe this? In the center of the will of God is the best place in the whole wide world to be. I've met people that had millions of dollars and were miserable. And I've met people that didn't have two dimes to rub together but had Jesus in His proper place. Am I right about it, y'all? Y'all got to help me preach tonight. I'm telling you, it ain't a matter of what you got. It's a matter of who you got and the place that you put him in life. And Jonah begins to run from the presence of the Lord. And he finds he can't outrun God. I can imagine him going to Joppa and the voice of the Holy Ghost whispering in his ear, you don't want to do this. You don't want to leave the presence of the Lord. I see him walking upon that boat. And he's going down into the ship and the Holy Ghost is prompting him saying you don't want to do this you don't know what you're doing just turn around and go to Nineveh but his heart falls cold on the commands of God and we find him asleep in the boat and watch this but the Lord sent a great storm can I get real for just a second we give the devil way too much credit sometimes. I sit down with people, well, the devil just won't leave me alone. 
My life's upside down. Things are going crazy. I just don't know how I'm going to fix it. I don't know what. I, the devil just won't leave me alone. You need somebody that loves you enough to tell you that it could be that it ain't got nothing to do with the devil, but it's got to do with them devilish choices uh, that you've been making uh, and you've been putting yourself in front of God. Uh, and when you choose to fight against God, uh, you're choosing to fight against an enemy that you can't fight against. Uh, and I believe sometimes uh, we give the devil what Way too much credit for the storms that are going on in our lives. The greatest enemy I have is the enemy in me. Making bad choices. And living the verse, you reap what you sow. Rebellion in the face of God is as the sin of witchcraft. And when we look up at God, little pipsqueaks such as us, Look up at a holy God and declare we're smarter than the God of heaven. I'll do what I want to do. I'll be who I want to be. I'll work the job I want to work. I'll date who I want to date. I'll make the business decisions I want to make. Who are you to tell me what to do? I'm a strong man. I've got lots of money in the bank. I've got a big house. And you need to understand that at any given moment, God could squash you like a bug. And in His mercy and in His love, He gives you an opportunity opportunity but how dare we think enough of ourselves to tell God no and Jonah has to pay the fare thereof the winds begin to rock the waves begin to roll and upon this boat those other men realize that there's somebody on board of whose fault this storm is and just by chance the lot fell upon Jonah. You ain't going to hide from God. He going to go in front of you and he going to make sure everybody knows. You may hide it for a little bit, but you can't hide it long. And here we find the lot falls upon Jonah. The story begins to escalate. And we find Jonah walking the plank. And out of the boat, Jonah's in the water. Seemingly for his life is over. And I promise you, listen to this. I promise you, if Jonah at that point could have had that decision to make over, he'd have made a different decision. But the Lord prepared a great fish. And out of the depths, how many of y'all love your Bible? Turn that TV off, get in your Bible. A great fish comes and swallows. Jonah whole. Reminds me of the story. This young girl went to public school a class and she went one day and the teacher was teaching on whales. And as the teacher began to teach on whales, the young girl raised her hand. She said, I know all about whales. I know all about these whales. Said, uh, my Sunday school teacher taught us how that Jonah got swallowed by a whale. This educated teacher said, young lady, I hate to bust your bubble about what you've learned in Sunday school, but although a whale is large and massive, its throat is very small, rendering it impossible for it to swallow a human body. That young girl did not give up for not even a second. And she said, I'm telling you, if the Bible said that he got swallowed whole, that he got swallowed whole. And back and forth, they begin to go with each other. Neither one of them budging an inch. Brother Cox said that girl finally said, okay, let me tell you what I'm going to do. Said one of these days I'm going to get to heaven. And I'm going to ask Jonah how it happened. Said the teacher popped back and said, what are you going to do if Jonah's not in heaven? She said, you ask him then. <laughs> Jonah is swallowed by this great fish. And out of the depths we find where God has prepared 
prepared this fish to swallow Jonah whole to give him an avenue number one of the mercy of God some of the things you think is the judgment of God is not the judgment of God it is the mercy of God he could have wiped Jonah off the planet but he was giving him one more opportunity to think about the decisions that he's been making Lord I feel like I'm getting to where I'm trying to get to and we find we're in the depths of the belly of that whale Jonah's there he's, he, he calls out to God and he thinks he's in hell and in the midst of the depths of the ocean uh, there comes a point where Jonah's finally so low uh, that he realizes uh, that his dreams uh, and his ambitions uh, and his goals uh, are not adding up to the ambitions that God has for his life uh, and we find that it was in the belly of the whale where God finally squashed uh, the rebellion in the heart of Jonah Jonah didn't just have a call and it did not just have a cost but Jonah had a cry. And it was in chapter number 2 where Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. He said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord and he heard me. Oh, y'all, 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 listen to this now. God could at any moment have wiped Jonah off the face of the planet. And if you think about this for a second, you would think that the God of heaven or somebody was saying, no, 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 you made this bed. Now you sleep in this bed. But that is not the picture of God that we find here. But at the depths of the belly of this great fish, at the bottom of the ocean, we do not find a God that is slapping Jonah around and saying it's your fault that you're here now enjoy your decision but we find rather a God that heard the cry of Jonah I wonder how many of you are glad tonight that you've got a God that no matter how low you go he is a God that hears your cry he's a God that knows where you are and knows what you're going through I'm glad that I've got a God that is so full of love and so full of mercy that he hears our cry well good God almighty I'm glad I've got a God that in the worst days of my life when I turned my back on God and ran a hundred miles an hour God should have let me die in my sin God should have let me die and go to a devil's hell but when I finally came to the place and came <laughs> and came to the end of my rope I did not find a God that whipped me and beat me but I found a God that had his arms open wide that said come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest that's the God I serve that's the God I live for somebody ought to help me tonight and remember when you was at the bottom of the barrel and you could not get up but there was a God that heard your cry and came to where you were yeah that's my God tonight For he knew me, yet he loved me. He whose glory makes the heaven shine. I'm so unworthy. Of such mercy Yet when he was on the cross I, I, I was on his mind Jonah 
had a cry. It was a hard cry. Came from a very hard time in his life. And I've learned that them hard times in our life are designed by God to get us over ourselves and realize how nothing we are. It was a hard cry, but I'm also glad it was a heard cry. Out of the fissure, Lord, I feel y'all. Hey, uh, out of the fish's belly and up through the depths of that ocean goes the cry of Jonah. And in heaven, the ear of God. The ear of God said, that's what I've been waiting on. I've been waiting on here. God didn't want Jonah to die. God didn't want Jonah to be punished for it. But, but, but God wanted him to get to the place where he'd say, here I am, Lord. And finally God said, he finally got it. And before we know it, that Great fish got orders from headquarters. And on the ocean, delivered where God, before UPS ever come around, God had a shipment plan. I don't ever remember time. That my dad wouldn't go to whoop me. How many of y'all had a daddy whoop you? That would help this generation. I promise you it would. And I don't ever remember a time, Brother Cox, that my dad wouldn't say something like this. Now, son, I hope he's watching. I hope you're watching, Dad. Now, son, see if you've heard this before. It's going to hurt me. I still don't believe that. I remember as a kid thinking, well, let's see if it hurts. Well, let's just trade places. My dad, you know, he'd grab your ankle, son. Why? And sure enough, wham. Attitude correction. And I'd squall and I'd cry. My dad wasn't mean about it, though. I, I, I don't ever remember a time. Tucker, come here. My daddy would spank me. And daddy would grab me. And he'd put me on his lap. And he'd say something like this. Shh. It's over now. It's over. Cry as loud as you want to cry. Daddy's not mad at you. It's over. If he would have used Bible terminology, he'd said something like this. There is therefore now no condemnation. <laughs> it's over. You got the point. You're where I wanted you to go. Daddy loves you. Here's, here's what it is. It's justified. Just as if it never happened. It's over. The payment's been paid for. I'm not going to hold it over your head. I'm not going to hold it over your head, but it's over, honey. And you know what I found about God that I'm thankful? Baptist people, they may take stuff and go sit down, son. Baptist people, they may... Oh, listen to me. Don't let him preach. Let me preach. Baptist people, they'll hold stuff over your head. And as soon as you do something else, they'll remind you of what you used to do and where you used to be and the things you've done. But how many of y'all can help me give God glory under this tent that God when he forgives us he forgets the sin and removes it as far as the east is from the west and says it's over you're justified just as if I never sinned it never happened it's over you got the point what sins are you talking about I don't remember them anymore 
Lord, help me. From the book of life, they've all been torn out. I don't remember them anymore. And Jonah had a cry. Jonah had a cry. It'd be one thing if the story ended at the cost that Jonah had. But the story does not end at the cost of Jonah and it does not end at the cry of Jonah. But it ends with the second chance that Jonah had. I need some crowd participation right here. All y'all on Facebook, y'all help me out now here. How many of y'all would agree with this statement? That God did not owe us one opportunity. Y'all agree with me? Everybody with me? God did not owe us. We did not deserve one chance. How many of y'all over here? How many of y'all agree? God did not owe us one chance. Everybody okay over here? Y'all with me? How many of y'all glad that God, you, you understand the fact that we don't deserve one chance when it comes to God? We didn't deserve God saving us. We didn't deserve God calling us in anything. There's nothing we could pay or deserve or merit the grace of God. And we did not deserve one chance. And with that, we could just shout that He gave us one chance. But how many of you have found, and here's some shouting ground, and a good opportunity for you to get crazy for just a minute that God is not just a God that will give you one chance but I have found that he is a God that is a God of two chances he's a God of three chances he's a God of four chances and we find in this story that we find a God that said that where sin did abound grace did much more abound and we find the Bible said in chapter number three or four one of those chapters said and the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time it was like it was a reset button they started all over and we find in this time that Jonah was ready to receive what God had for him and I am thankful in 2017 under an old gospel tent that that truth remains today that no matter how many mistakes you've made and no matter how many times you've turned your back on God he is a God that stands with his arms wide open that says come unto me come on home I'll receive you unto himself whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved if you believe that tonight give God glory and praise for the goodness and the mercy we find in Jesus Jonah leaves and Jonah goes And he goes to Nineveh. And it wasn't one person that made things right with God. Listen to me. The entire nation got right with God. No wonder God wouldn't leave him alone. God had destiny wrapped up in the life of Jonah. I have said everything that I said tonight to say this. What's it going to take for God to get your attention? What's it going to take for God to get your attention? May I say tonight that God has a great fish with your name on it. If needs be. Sad thing. Some people never make things right with God. Until they're on their deathbed. <gasps> I'm sorry God. And their life is wasted. What's it going to take. For this generation. To stop straddling the fence dating Jesus on Sunday and living for the world the rest of the week. 
What's it going to take for this lukewarm generation to quit living a social gospel and a prosperity gospel and understand that God was not created for you to exist in a happy life, but we were created to bring glory unto God. And we must understand that God has a calling on our lives. What is it going to take for the God of heaven to get your attention tonight? May I remind you it is a dangerous thing to say no to God. In my mind, I'm thinking right now about people that I've known that in a moment of lust, in a moment of sin, in a moment of selfishness, they said no to God and chased after their happiness only to find on the other side of that fake facade wall painted by the devil of happiness is there was a trap on the other side of that wall. Sin will always make you pay more than you wanted to pay and it will keep you longer than you wanted to stay. I'm thinking about preachers that are dead and in a grave today because they quit on God. I'm talking about people that are fighting diseases and people that are doing this and that as a direct result of them saying no to God. It ain't got nothing to do with the devil it has to do that they said no to God. And God will get your attention. I talked about it last night. One of the things I have been kicking across this country that I want to kick tonight and throw all over the internet is this thing where we've, 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 we've crept on our churches and said, well, I got saved as a kid and because I'm saved, I'm going to always be saved and I get to go to heaven. And they think, well, that means I can live however I want to live and do whatever I want to do and that God will just keep me happy and that God will forgive me every time I turn around. Listen to me, I believe God is a God of love and I believe that God is a God of mercy. But hear me well, there is a line that you can cross with God that you don't ever want to cross because if God in His love and mercy can do so many mighty things you do not want to see the sight of God and the wrath of God people they don't preach like this anymore they want people to come in and feel good about themselves and feel good about their life and justify their sin but you came to the right place you come to the wrong place tonight I love you too much to lie to you the truth is there is a side to God that if you keep running running from God and you keep saying no to God you better learn that God gives you the breath in your lungs and God gives you the health your body has and you are gambling with life you are gambling with eternity when you continue to say no to God am I right about it how many of y'all have heard a preacher by the name of Mays Jackson Mays Jackson probably one of my favorite preachers to listen to of bygone days and uh, a preaching machine. He preached a sermon on this subject. God will set your barley fields on fire. He would preach a sermon about how the king sent after one of the men and the men refused to come. So the king went and sent his men to burn the man's barley fields on fire to get his attention that when the king calls, the king means to come now. He preached on the subject that God knows exactly what he has to take to get your attention. I want everybody to pay attention for just a few minutes. Let me tell you what I got to say and I'll take my seat. In that sermon, Mays Jackson would tell a story. Said he went near Aiken, South Carolina to preach a meeting. And while he was in that town, there was a man that he'd seen from years ago. He walks up to that man and he recognizes him by face and they begin to talk. While they're having a conversation, it enters the mind of Brother Mays about the stories that he had heard 
about this man's life. This man was a pastor from a church down the road. A well sought after preacher. A well loved preacher. A good man. Mays looked at him and he said this. Sir, is it true that you've quit on God? He said, somebody told me that you have resigned your church and gave up and quit on God. Please tell me it's not true. Said that man, kind of laughed it off and said, Oh, Brother Mays, don't say it like that. That's not exactly what happened. He said, it wasn't like that. He said, I just got stressed out and I, I got overrun with it all and I, I couldn't handle it no more. And, and, and Mays, I just left and I, I went home and I got my old job back. And, and, and Brother Mays, everything's been wonderful. I, I, I made enough money now to, to buy me a big old house and I got me two nice new cars in the driveway and said, we are happier now than we've ever been. Mays looked at him and said, Sir, you know better. You know better. Said he looked at him and he knew Mays' sermon well. And he looked that man in his eyeballs and he said, God will set your barley fields on fire. Said, Sir, you know better than to tell God no. You know better than to quit on God. You're operating on dangerous grounds. If God continues to draw you and you continue to say no, there's no telling what God will do to get your attention. And said that man in all of his arrogance and in all of his pride looked at Mays with a smile on his face and said, I'm fine. I don't need you. I don't need this. And turned around and walked back and refused the rebuke that Brother Mays had on his life and said he went home and the heart of Brother Mays was broken as that man walked away help me Jared said that man began to go home and as he got home a few weeks passed by and he's on the big wraparound porch of that big old house he bought said his kids were awful bothered that daddy quit church and quit God his sons were old enough that they would ask questions they'd say daddy when are you going to take us back to church Daddy, when are you going to go back to preaching? Daddy, when are you going to take us back to Sunday school? Daddy, when, when are we going to get to see you take a Bible and preach from it again? Daddy, hey, Daddy, when, 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 are, you going to, when are you going to go back to church with us? So that man sitting on his porch and one of his sons started pulling on his coat. Daddy, when are you going to take us back to church? Daddy, when are we going to go back to church? When are you going to preach again? That daddy took his Augusta Chronicle and slammed it on the porch. Said, look at everything I've bought for you. A new house, new cars. Look at that playground in the yard. Can't you just be happy with our new life? Said, go on, get out of here, go play. Said that daddy took that newspaper and flipped it up. That little boy looked at his daddy like he didn't even recognize him. Baseball glove in one hand, another ball in the other hand, and starts throwing the ball to himself in the yard. Throwing that ball to himself. After just a little while, that boy threw that ball, and that ball hit something. Ran down in the yard and through the ditch and topped the hill. That little boy took off through that yard, running as fast as he could after that ball. He come up over the top of the hill, and simultaneously, Brother May said that man's testimony was, while he's reading that Augusta Chronicle, he heard coming down the street, tires squealing trying to stop only for that man to look up and his boy had run right out in the road after that ball a big old truck completely ran over his son as a father I, I can't even imagine that
said that man ran off of that porch, ran across that yard, and ran into that road, <laughs> grabbed his little boy, squalled and screamed and cried as the life left his son. That man's testimony to his dying day was in the middle of that street holding his lifeless son. He said, God, I hear you now. God, I hear you now. God, God I hear you now. Yes, God will forgive him. Yes, God loves him, but he'll never give that boy back. Said the next week that man went to Sunday school and said, show me where my boy sat. Said that daddy sat in the little chair where his son sat at Sunday school and wept and cried and repented to God told Mays Jackson to tell his story everywhere that he went. That you better be careful when you say no to God. Because only God knows what it will take to get your attention. This thing ain't a game. Hear me. This thing ain't a game. We've got this false picture of God. This thing ain't a game. This is not you flipping a coin on whether you're going to serve Jesus today or not serve Jesus. Somebody better make up your mind that there's other people at stake besides you. You want to keep living in sin, you better watch out. What would God have to take to finally break your will and rebel? Can I be honest, Brother Tommy? I can't imagine being so selfish where God would have to do something to my kids where God would have to do something to me so drastic to get my attention oh that Jonah in chapter 1 would have said yes to God and we'd have bypassed all this but instead we find 3, 4, 5 chapters you help yourself man we find all these chapters with God trying to get the attention we ain't trying to do nothing we find God getting the attention of Jonah every person in this tent I'm talking to you what's it going to take for God to get your attention an early funeral a sickness a trouble a trial an avoidable circumstance if you would just say yes to Jesus tonight. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. And tonight the word of the Lord came unto you. And you've got to make a decision if you're going to say yes or if you're going to say no. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Nobody's looking around. God's people are praying. I want us to stand to our feet all across the tent. I wonder how many people would get out of their seats right now and come say yes to God. Right now, right now, right now, right now, right now. Out of your seat. Come on, people. Let's do business with God tonight. Come on, young person. Come on, mama. Come on, daddy. As for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Now, now, how long will you halt between two opinions? How long are you going to straddle the fence? Come on, right now. In Jesus' name, right now. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. God, I'm coming to say yes to God. I'm not going to Tarshish. I'm going to Nineveh. Oh, God. God, I come to repent. I come to make things right. 
Oh, people are still moving. This is wonderful. You come on. 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 Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. Come on, sir. Come on, ma'am. People are still moving as they sing. As they sing. to Jesus I surrender make me Savior holy thine let me feel the Holy Spirit in truth we know that thou to Jesus I surrender Lord I give myself to thee and fill 
fill me with thy love and power let a blessing fall on me I just had how old are you destiny 15 years old I seen her walk that aisle just now with tears running down her cheeks and I Heard her with my own ears call on the name of Jesus and ask Jesus to come on the inside of her heart. How many of y'all believe that's Bible salvation right there? Stephen Dean, 24 years old, just come and ask Jesus Christ to come into his heart. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, nobody's looking around. Those of you that were with Destiny, y'all make sure y'all bring me that card of hers back up here. I want to pray for her. Good, we got it. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, nobody's looking around. I would not be doing what I'm called to do if I didn't ask you the most important question that anybody ever asked me. God's people are praying right now. I beg of you to pray. I wonder, would there be one person under this tent that would say, Brother C.T., while you were preaching, God dealt with my heart. I'm not 100% sure that if I died tonight, that I'd go to heaven. Brother C.T., would you please pray for me? My prayer won't save you, but I'm going to pray that God will give you another opportunity. God would show mercy on you. If that's you tonight, you say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved. Would you please pray for me unapologetically, unashamedly, with heads bowed and eyes closed. I want you to launch your hand in the air saying, Preacher, I'm not sure I'm saved. Please pray for me. Would there be one, one more that would throw a hand up in the air? I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. Would there be another? I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. Would there be another preacher? Please pray for me. Things are not right between me and God. Preacher, please pray. For, I see those hands. I'm a, one more. I'm, 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 I'm about to pray. But before I pray, I want if there be one more person. Let's say, Brother Townsend, please pray for me when you pray. I'm not sure that I'm saved. Throw your hand up high in the air. I see that hand over there in the corner. Thank you. I see that hand in the back. Thank you. Brother Townsend, before you pray, would you please mention my name? Would you please represent me and pray for me when you pray? Oh, I feel like some people about to get born again under the tent. Would there be another? Preacher, please pray for me. I see that hand in the corner. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, several hands across the tent. I'm about to pray. Will there be one more? Throw a hand up, preacher. Things are not right between me and God. Please pray for me when you pray. Would there be another? Throw a hand up. Put it right back down. I see that hand, ma'am. I want to give you a moment. I don't want to rush you. I know your heart's beating out of your chest right now because the Holy Ghost is dealing with you. The devil's telling you to sit still and it'll all be over. But this is your moment. This is your time. I wonder, would you launch your hand in the air and say, Preacher, remember me in prayer. Things are not right between me and God. Would there be one more? Thank you. I see that hand. Would there be one? Uh, thank you. Thank you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Thank you in the back. I see that hand. Oh, would there be one more? Preacher, please remember me when you pray. I'm about to pray. Three, two, one. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, Lord, for all of these that have raised their hands, admitting the fact, God, that things are not right, but, God, the fact that they raised their hand lets me know that they're not too far gone. God, that they're still concerned about their soul. So the God of heaven, I ask you this. I ask you to give them the strength that they need and the faith that they need to make this happen tonight. God, that they could call on the name of Jesus and be saved before it's too late Lord I ask you to do this this is your job not mine 
I can preach, but I sure can't save anybody, but you can. So, Lord, I ask in Jesus' name to do it right now. While heads are bowed and eyes are closed, nobody's looking around, Christians are praying. Every single one of you that just raised your hand, saying, Preacher, things aren't right between me and God. I want you to lift your head up. Look at me eyeball to eyeball for just a second. Thank you. Thank you. Look up here at me, ma'am. Look up here at me, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Every single one of you. I got a Bible right here that teaches me how to tell people how you can know you're going to heaven when you die. Every single one of you that just raised your hand across this tent, in the name of Jesus, right now, I want you to step out of your seat and come to me right now. Come to me right now. Come to me right now. And let me take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Ma'am, won't you come? Ma'am, won't you come? Won't you come? Won't you come? Let me take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Here comes one down the aisle. The rest of you, come on. You raised the hand and said, I'm not sure I'm saved. Won't you come right now? Sing, Jared. Sing as they sing. Here comes some more. Y'all stop that ring. There's a ring up here. There's still time for some to come. Won't you come to Christ tonight? I hope y'all got time to watch people get saved tonight. How many of y'all remember the night you got saved? How many of y'all believe that's the best decision you ever made in your life? Here's what's hard on me. Here's what's hard on me. It's always been hard. Cameron Stanley, 19 years old from Ruffin, North Carolina, just came and trusted Christ as his Savior. Isn't that wonderful? There's a few still being dealt with. But let me talk to you while they're being dealt with. 
One of the hardest things I do is watching people come get saved, but yet having seen people raise their hand, saying, I'm lost, preacher. And yet they stay in their seat, and they'll leave this tent lost without God. Listen to me. It's dangerous to say no to God. You are not guaranteed that you'll have another opportunity to be saved. Here's what I'm not going to do. I'm going to tell you this nearly every night. I'm not going to go back and lay my head on my pillow tonight and wonder with your face on my mind if I gave you enough opportunity to be saved. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask Jared and them to sing a verse and a chorus of a song. If you don't come during that verse and chorus, then it's going to be on you and not on me. You won't be able to stand before God and say that Brother C.T. didn't give you enough opportunity. I'm telling you, this is your time. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Come to Christ tonight. Come to Christ. Whoever God's dealing with, I don't know who you are, but I want you to get out of your seat. Come while there's still time. This is your opportunity. Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? Would you come? And close Hallelujah. Here comes one. Again. Here comes one. Here comes another. The light Amen, honey. Poor sinner. Erica, get in there. That never gets old to me, y'all. That never gets old to me. Yes. Come on in Jesus' name. Don't say no. He loves you tonight. Come to Jesus. Here comes another. Y'all help me right here. Help me. Come on, right there. Kneel right there. We're going to pray with you. Alyssa, 18 years old, just gave her heart to Jesus. Peggy, you say your name's Peggy, Miss Peggy? 83 years old, just come. Stand up here with me, Paige.
Paige is shaking to death right now. Paige, what'd you just ask Jesus to do for you? To save me. Hey, if that don't bless you, your blessers broke, y'all. That's why we come into the here to see people changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. <laughs> How many of y'all believe when a person gets saved that God forgives their sins? How many of y'all believe that when a person asks Jesus to come into their heart, He writes their name in the last book of life? How many of y'all believe that when a man or woman gets saved, that He prepares them a home in heaven? I believe we ought to shout tonight over those that have trusted the name of Jesus and found a friend. Help me, somebody that's sticking closer than a brother. It's real. It's wonderful. It's available. It's powerful. It's amazing in this day and hour. We got another one here. Destiny got saved tonight. Paige got saved tonight. Cameron got saved tonight. Stephen got saved tonight. Layla Sands got saved tonight. Braylon Sands got saved tonight. Lily Allen got saved tonight. Uh, Miss Peggy got born again tonight. I'm talking about, hey, that's reason to rejoice right there. And Miss Alyssa from Mooresville, 18 years old, trusted Christ as her Savior tonight. Listen to me. If y'all will just bring a lost person under this tent. You hear me? And create an opportunity for them to hear the gospel and for the Holy Ghost to pull on their heart. I believe God will save them. This ain't a camp meeting. This ain't, a, this ain't a southern gospel singing. This ain't a, a shout fest where we come to worship all night. This is a soul-saving station where we're asking God to change the lives of people and revive this nation one person at a time. I believe God's able. I said I believe God's able. Here's what I want to do. I believe if you did this, this won't bother you at all. The Bible says if I'm ashamed of him before men, he'd be ashamed of me before my father. Here's what I want to do. Every single, keep on playing. Every single person that got saved tonight, if you come down and we prayed with you, or if you ask God to save you in your seat, I, I want you to come. We got a Bible for you. I got a brand new free book we want to put in your hand that, you, that will help you start your walk with Christ. If you got saved tonight, if you trusted Christ tonight, I want you to get out of your seat one more time. Come stand right here with me. We're going to rejoice with you. We're going to put this stuff in your hands. Come on, right now, right now. You come on, right now, right now. Church, let's rejoice with all of these that trusted Christ as their Savior. Come on, right now, right now, right now. Amazing Grace, sing. Oh, amazing. One more time, I want us to give God glory under this tent for the people that He saved and the lives that He changed tonight.
listen to me, listen to me. At each station tonight, along the way, there'll be ushers. How many of y'all remember those Be My Guest cards we had last year? I believe this. If you'll bring a sinner to this tent, God will have an opportunity to reach their heart and save them. If all of y'all would work on staff this week and work on getting people under this tent, ain't no telling how many people could get saved by the grace of God. Around this tent, there's stations, ushers with those Be My Guest cards. They're going to bring some, put them on the stage. I want every single person to grab a handful. When you go to Hardy's in the morning, put one in their hand. When you put it at the gas station tomorrow, put it in their hand. I want this entire town canvassed with these Be My Guest cards, letting people know we want them under here. You hear me? It is a gospel for all people. We want them under this tent to hear the good news of the gospel. So they're to come and be a part of that. So on your way out tonight, we want you to grab some of those cards. Be a part. we got an incredible week left. Tomorrow night's Wednesday night. Many of the churches moving the Wednesday night service to this, under the tent. And then Thursday night, the Rochester family will be here singing. I'll be preaching. And then Friday night uh, will be our big dedication night. Everybody that's had a part of this tent will be here on Friday night. We'll dedicate the tent. A lot of special things will happen here Friday night. Then I'll preach. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be incredible. Then all next week, how many of y'all are glad that we put the tent back up this year and seen what God's going to do? Uh, what a blessing, what an honor, and what a joy. So you come be a part of that. Don't forget to stop by the table, get the new Burlington Revival shirts and CDs and preaching CDs. Brother Heath and Brother Jared have stuff over there, and then you can get tonight's sermon as well over there on the table and different things over there. So you stop by and get that. And we will see you under the tent at 7.30 tomorrow night. In the morning at 10.30, Brother Buchanan will be doing the prayer service. You pastors, please don't miss that. Let's come together for a great time of refreshing and prayer in the morning. All of you on Facebook, thank you for watching. Is there anything else? I just want